There was a great discussion last week in the eLearning Heroes forums about how to create a vertical sliding menu. And I put this one idea out there that would be pretty easy to replicate. The learner can click around to these various sections if they want to, or they can click on any of these home buttons to jump back to the start page. You can help yourself to the source file from that discussion thread if you'd like to take a closer look at this. And I also want to give you a quick look at how it was built. So basically what I've done here in my PowerPoint file is drawn three rectangles on this first slide. Each one is a different color. And then I placed some text within each one. And then you can make your text go sideways like I've done here. It's real easy on the format tab. If you go to shape styles, there's this text box option for the shape and you can change the um, text so that it goes sideways like this. And that way you don't have to draw a separate text box and rotate it and place it over the shape. It's real easy to make it just one single shape. And then for formatting on the format tab, you can do whatever you want, but I just chose these existing kind of ready-made shape styles here to get that nice gradient look. So you'll want to draw a rectangle for each of the sections that you have, and then you can get to work creating the actual sections, which was what these remaining slides are. Slides two, three, and four represent the content areas. And what I did for each of the content areas is I created two shapes, this tall skinny rectangle and then a wider one that was the content area. And I also added my text, the sideways text here, it's been rotated, you know, to be vertical and then another text box right here for my content. And then down here in the corner, I added this little home button. This is just something you can get from the Microsoft Clip Art Library. And you can add a hyperlink to go back to the beginning on the insert tab. If we go to hyperlink, you can see that this is pointing to slide number one in this document in case users want to, you know, want a quick and easy way to get back to the beginning of the course. And then of course, for the remaining sections here, I just did a similar thing. The only difference is that the placement of each one is different, just that the, you know, the order of these vertical tabs would, would be consistent. So once I had all that stuff in place, I grouped the items that represented the active content area. And so what I mean by that is like on this section one slide, I've got one group that contains the green shapes, the text here, and the home button. This is all one group. And the reason that I did that is because I wanted to add a subtle animation to that group to make it feel like there's a little bit of a transition just so that when the learner switches from slide to slide, it doesn't seem real abrupt. So if we select this group on the animations tab, you can see I've applied a fade animation and the start is set to with previous. That means it's going to happen as soon as the learner arrives at the slide and the duration or the speed here, I cranked this back on, I think it defaults to half a second, but I tightened this up a little bit to a quarter second. It just seemed to look nicest that way when it was a little bit quicker. So I did that to each of the sections. And then from there, it's just a matter of adding hyperlinks to the individual slides. So like on this first slide here, I've created a separate shape. Um, I've made this transparent on the format tab. If you go to the shape styles menu and click this little corner button here, you can select the fill tab and change the transparency to 100% and then also get rid of the line so that it's an invisible shape. And then you can apply your hyperlink to that. So if we go to the insert hyperlink, you can see that this one's pointing to the second slide. And the reason that it's quick to do that is because once you've done that once, you can just do a control C and then paste that over any other item that you want to be clickable. So like if I wanted to use that same hyperlink somewhere else, for example, in slide three, I would just paste it here and then move it into place, which is what I did. So here's the one for this particular slide. So every place that you want to be clickable, you'll want to do that. And that gives you all of your navigation. Now, if you're going to publish your project with Articulate Presenter, Another thing that I did was I tweaked my player template a little bit in two ways. So if we come up here to the Articulate menu and click Player Templates, you'll see a couple things. One is on the layout, I have only the slide only view selected and active. And that's because I really didn't want a sidebar or any player controls to be visible in this example. I really wanted everything to just be, you know, the stuff that I built on my slides, nothing else for the player. And speaking of player controls, if we switch to that tab, you'll see that I also um, disabled the forward, back, and pause controller, as well as the change view mode button, because by default, those will show up even in slide only view, and I didn't want that, so I got rid of those. And that's pretty much all that I did, and it ends up looking like the example that we saw earlier. So I hope that helps. Let us know if you have any questions.